Welcome to The Building Code. I'm Zach Rotovich. And I'm Charlie Bertwistle. Hello, my friend. How's it been, Zach? Hey, man. It's always, we're always vibing. We're yeah. Hanging. Yeah, I've been I've been in the studio for about fifteen minutes now, so nice uh, to you to finally join me. Yeah, there's a little bit of controversy <laughs> back set. You know, Charlie and I have taught we have jobs, and sometimes you know meetings run long, and this is the best part of my job. But sometimes you just gotta you gotta roll with the punches and get here and and let her rip, baby. Let her rip. Well, I'm glad you could make it, Zach. We have a fantastic <laughs> episode today that I'm very, 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 uh, very much looking forward to. Uh, we have. Heather Tankersley, who is going to be at the International Builder Show this year um, on a panel with a couple other guests that we've had on the podcast before and hosted by our CEO, Dan Houghton. Yeah, that's right. It's going to be really exciting. It's a little bit of a sneak peek about what to expect down at IBS on the panel. It's an educational panel at IBS about project management mistakes and most importantly, how to avoid them. Hear about all the missteps, big and small, in this candid conversation as builders share the nitty gritty of the lessons they've learned They've made the mistakes, so you don't have to. I'm really excited to hear this panel when you and I are down there. Yeah, to get absolutely. these insights, and it's going to be a great panel too. Like, obviously, we know Dan well, uh, our boss, and uh, but Heather, I'm I'm really excited to meet her. We've had Joe Christensen and Brad Levitt on here before. Um, they're both very very entertaining people as well. So, I, I just love the concept behind the panel. Like anybody can go up and like make their company sound really sexy and that they've never made any mistakes and they're the best ever. This is completely flipping the switch on that is here's everything we did wrong. Learn from us. so You don't make the same mistakes. That's right. Well, people aren't here for us. Let's get Heather on <laughs> Definitely here. Definitely not. Heather, welcome to the building code. We're so happy that you could join us here today. Just, we always like to get started. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started in construction. Hi guys. Thanks for having me. I feel, uh, feel honored to be uh, here with you guys. Um, yeah, so in construct, I joke, I'm like the accidental person that ended up in construction and owning a construction business. Um, I actually, I have my bachelor's of arts in business and communications, and, uh, I actually got hired, um, by an electrical contractor in, uh, 2007 oh, and I was going to come unique. in and do marketing for them. And then, oh, wait, right. Oh, wait, great. <laughs> Perfect. Great, great timing. timing. Great, great timing. timing. Great timing. Right. I'm six months in. They're like, Cool. We don't need a marketing department anymore, right? Oh, but, um, Isn't that the they, time our whole marketing team just looked at us like, what do you mean? They're like, what? <laughs> They're like, wait, hold on. What's going on here? Who runs the podcast? Um, yeah. So they, um, the company, you know, really liked me and I was young and they were like, you know, you're really smart. Let's keep you on board. You're going to join the construction team. So they moved me over. Hmm. I did some middles, worked on airport jobs and, you know, doing the basic grunt work of some middle packages and commercial construction, which is so fun. Um, and so then, you know, from there, I just worked my way up. Um, I ended up going back to school, got my construction management degree, um, and then ended up running a bunch of work um, for them. I met my husband on a job site. So oh, fun oh, fact, man, um, there you go. met him. He worked for a GC local um, here in Sacramento. Like a Disney and, movie. Um, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then, um, you know, we were both running a bunch of work, had uh, kids after we got married and just traveling a ton working for a bunch of different places um, up and down California. And so we were like, hey, you know what? This isn't gonna work for our young family. Um, my husband actually got let go from his job and we had a two-year-old and I was pregnant with our second. And he was like, he already had his license. And he was like, let's do it. I, I think it's time. I wanna start a business, you know? He was like, it's been a dream of mine. And I was like, you know what? I think that's a great idea. I like, I like, let's do it. So supported him, stayed on, that was in 2017. And um, I joined the company full time in 2019, left my job and um, I was a top project manager for the second largest electrical contractor in California and wow. um, left that career and started uh, a business. And now we do uh, high end luxury remodels and new builds. So, did, and did you say that was just uh, that was just 2019? That was the, I joined in 2019. We started the company in end of 2017. So we just had our five year anniversary, November one. Gotcha. So. Well, congratulations. So what, uh, from 2017, 2019 to now, um, kind of tell us a little bit more about the company. Like how many employees do you have? How many kind of jobs are you doing a year? And I mean, you've kind of got to see it grow from the beginning. So what's that been like the, you know, working for the second largest, uh, electrical per, uh, company in the California to kind of seeing the other side and starting from scratch. Yeah. So, you know, it's grown a ton. You know, we started, it was just, it was my, my husband did everything. So Steve, he did, you know, 
hired a buddy, got him to take like two weeks vacation to do his first remodel, right? And that was in uh, December of 2017. And so he did his first remodel, did everything, installed the cabinets, you know, I think he hired an electrician, that was about it. And so um, I worked in the back end, got all the QuickBooks set up, got Builder Trend. That was actually one of the first things I did because I was running the business at night or on the weekends because I had right. a regular job. And um, it was it allowed us to at least keep all the paperwork straight since I had to do accounting at night or when there was a baby sleeping. So um, we grew, hired our first employee in 2018. And then we grew to, um, right now we have a team of nine. Wow. So wow. we, um, and we, right now we're, you know, we've had a hundred percent growth for the last three years. Um, this year we'll finish at roughly $6 million in revenue. So, nice. you know, big, big jumps, um, you know, five years in, but it's been really cool. We've done, um, you know, everything getting started, basic bathroom remodel to now we're doing a 6,000 square foot new build. So we have that on the books right now. So you follow us on social media that uh, that job's getting underway with uh, rough framing right now. So um, getting ready to close up drywall here going into the winter. Well, our you know next question is what makes it unique, but that's one thing right away. It's super unique is the variety of projects that you're doing, but I'd love to hear more about, you know, what makes you stand out on other builders out in California, you know, booming construction industry. So how do you distinguish yourself amongst, you know, the competition? Yeah, definitely. I think the thing that's kind of cool is number one, we're like, we're husband wife team, right? But everybody always assumes like, well, you must do design, right? It's like, no, that is not my lane. I do not do design. Like, don't ask me, right? Don't ask me to pick colors. Um, Steve actually runs all of our estimating and our marketing and um, I run all the production. So I oversee all of the project managers. I see over our lead carpenters um, out in the field. So I run all the production side. So all the constructability pieces. Um, but really for us, I think the main thing that keeps us different from other builders in our area um, is we run our work like a commercial contractor, right? right? Like what our principles that we learned in commercial construction, we apply from the first time we meet a client to when we are completing their job. So the client comes to us and they're like, I want you to do my addition, you know, for my house, right? We don't do a job without, you know, a designer involved. Um, if it needs architectural drawings for permits, structural engineering, um, you know, we that is a requirement for us. We have to have an architect, we have to have an engineer, we have to have a designer, um, everything's specced out, right? We're picking all the tile, we're picking all the light fixtures, we're doing everything ahead of time, right? Very similar to a design build process that you would get in commercial construction. Yeah. In that principle too, we budget along the way, right? We'll do base um, build cost, right? Your hard costs, your lumber costs, right? Well, what's it going to do just to get the building vertical, right? Then you have your finishes and those kind of things. And we budget, make sure that we are staying in line with clients' expectations, right? What they want to spend on the job, what they want to invest in their home or their new build. Um, and then down to construction, right? We're doing pull scheduling. We're working with our sub trades. Um, you know, we sub everything out minus finished carpentry. So we do only cabinets and we do custom mill work in-house. Um, we'll hang some doors. We'll do custom things like those, that kind of stuff. We have some really, really talented guys on our team. And um, so we're finishing things out at the end with spec books, right? I've got a binder to deliver to a client today that's about this thick, if nobody can see me, it's, uh, you know, about five, five inch binders, right? For an addition that we did that has every manual in it, it has every care instruction for the countertops to the faucet, to what tile, you know, we picked and what grout the designer designed at the end and red line drawings. So we're putting all those packages together at the end and giving the client a nice send off at the end. So from start to finish, we're very, very hands on very involved in the process and uh, taking the client step by step through that. It's a it's a luxury service, right? We do a lot of hand holding to move to the next step and keeping uh, keeping the client engaged. Yeah, it's it's definitely impressive. The you know, like you just said right there, keeping the client engaged, the the client first mentality, um, but just the the ability to get where you were five years ago to where you guys are at now, I think is really really impressive and. And people are taking notice. So Builder Trend just did a, a case study that we'll have linked in our show notes um, all around your company. And then you're also going to be at a panel out at the International Builder Show, which is my new favorite topic to talk about because I get to go this year. He's just, he's uh, just 
it's like a kid, new lows, honestly. Yeah, it's like a kid finding out about <laughs> Christmas. Help himself. Kid finding out about Christmas for the first time. So uh, I'm super excited. I will definitely be there. Um, the panel is going to be moderated. So will I for our listeners. We'll both be there. <laughs> oh, yeah. So will Zach. But you're going to be on a panel moderated by one of our founders, Dan Houghton, um, at the International Builder Show in January. For I'm hopefully a lot of our listeners will be there as well. Can you give a uh, share a little bit about what that's going to be about? Um, what the, the the kind of topic the panel is and what attendees can kind of expect to learn? Yeah. So on the panel, you're going to have uh, Brad from AFT Construction uh, out of Scottsdale, um, and then you'd have Joe from Cardinal Crest um, out of Kansas City. Both great guys. Um, a lot of knowledge, really good builders, right? Doing a lot of variety of things. You know, Brad with AFT has got all kinds of crazy builds there in Arizona doing, you know, green energy and all that. Um, Joe is just, he's such a smart guy doing a ton of stuff, right? They do commercial and they do residential. Um, and if you don't follow him on Instagram, he's hilarious. So, We've had and he's totally like how he is in person. Yeah. Like I just was with them this past week and, um, Huntington Beach and I, I got to meet Joe in person and uh, they are, they're two awesome guys and he's just as funny in person. Um, but the panel is going to be great though, because it's really, it's like learn from my mistakes, right? Like what have you learned in project management that, you know, somebody can listen to us talk about and, and share some of our insight and our knowledge because, you know, we've been building for, for a while now and, and obviously got to a point where we've worked for other people and then we've worked on our own and we've trained other project managers and, and what's, what works for us and what really hasn't. <laughs> yeah. Well, Heather, I, I was listening to your process and how detailed you are. And so it's super interesting. You're on a panel about not making mistakes. And I was like, well, Heather probably has got some horror stories of mistakes that maybe have led to her being so disciplined and following very strict commercial contracting principles in a residential space. I'd love to hear, you know, what are some of the mistakes that you've learned from that, you know, kind of helped you get where you are from now? Oh yeah. I mean, I, I always have a joke that whenever you see a con like a client contract, right? And depending on how many pages there are, that's every mistake that the contractor has learned along the way. So once you're like 30 <laughs> years in, that contract is like 50 pages long, right? Like those are something that has come back at the end, right? And you know, I think for me, one of the biggest things, um, especially in project management or with any client, it's just it's expectations, right? Like sometimes I think we we're always just trying to anticipate like okay, we don't want the client to see the sausage being made, right? Like construction's not pretty. Everybody sees the pretty pictures at the end, right? But that process to get there is not pretty. And so sometimes it's like, you don't want the client to see the sausage being made, but sometimes you just have to set the expectation that, you know, this is made by humans, right? Like this is not perfect. This is not your iPhone. This isn't made in a warehouse or it's not manufactured, right? So part of that is, is under really just teeing up the client's expectations. And I think one of the ch most challenging things as a project manager is making sure that your client recognizes what they're going to get, right? I, I think that gets you so far if you can at least give them some knowledge of that. And sometimes it is so showing them the sausage, right? You, you don't wanna know what's in there, but sometimes it helps them understand this is why this has to be this way, right? It's great, we could draw this on a drawing, but when it comes to actually structural engineering it and and doing the build, we we can't do that, right? Because of X, Y, Z. So expectations are the number one thing I think affect your ability to be a good project manager. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. I mean, I'm sure given your service and your detail, you're meeting with your client regularly, your project manager's expectation is kind of to be uh, a partner in the build process and com over communicating because I'm sure it, you know one slip of detail and now we're talking about actual like added expenses and and that's when people really tend to get frustrated or you know concerned or even your margins get affected. Hundred percent, right? If the client expected some you know stack stone to have a certain pattern or a certain layout and you didn't do a mock up ahead of time and then the mason just put it all up there and well that's not what i expected and i don't like that you know that's that's a big challenge it's especially challenging to working with um you know a designer of design intent you know you have to make sure that the design intent that the designer has in mind is also in line with what the client's expectations are and that those two things drive together and sometimes we end up in this middle space of ensuring that we can build it one and then you know we get shown the pretty picture of can make this happen and 
it, that's a hard line to walk sometimes. Yeah, like a good example is like uh, Zach set the expectation that he would be late for the recording today. <laughs> and so even though I didn't like him being late, he had already set those expectations, so I couldn't be too mad. <laughs> that was for Heather. Not Were for you, you disappointed, though? I was, yeah, slightly oh. disappointed, but that's just because I have higher expectations for Zach. Yeah, he wants me to be better, frankly. Absolutely. He wants people to know about it. One thing. Exactly. So now, now you need to do the plus delta at the end, and <laughs> mm. you know, figure out what you're going to change next time, so you don't repeat it. Yep. So. Add another page to the contract, and uh, yeah. Really, I'm going to I'm going to negotiate a personal assistant for my contract just to communicate with people. Okay. You know? <laughs> yeah. Sure. If you can get that done. <laughs> That's perfect. Oh. His name's Nick Kanitsky, actually. <laughs> oh, a huge shout out, to our guy Nick. Um, one thing I want to double back on, Heather, that you, you mentioned that you uh, were just with uh, Brad and Joe. A couple of weeks ago, um, you guys have all you're all going to be on the panel. You're all going to be out at IBS. You're all builder trend users, and you've all been on the Building Code podcast. So, uh, a fantastic group of people. How has networking and kind of learning from fellow builders in the industry uh, helped drive your company's success? And especially with people that may be listening that's considered going to IBS or not, um, is that another opportunity to kind of get out there and meet people and learn? Definitely, I. I actually met Brad through social media, um, chatting with him on Instagram, checking out his builds. You know, a lot of his building principles have follow the same thing that we do. He also came from commercial construction, kind of struck up a rapport via social media. Um, I was on his uh, podcast about two years ago and we just kind of hit it off. Um, come to find out he had actually done work for a company I used to work for and um, he worked in the low voltage space. I worked for the electrical contractor. So we had some history and rapport and kind of similar backgrounds. And uh, we ended up, um, Steve and I went out to Arizona and we ended up meeting up with him and uh, you know, he was so gracious and took us on a, a job site tour and took us you know, to his office and we got to see a ton of stuff. But that all really just came from the ability to put yourself out there and so to network, right? Social media, Instagram, all those things, you know, are key to having a network in your, in your space. And if you're, if you're considering going to IBS or if you're considering like, is it, is it going to be worth it? There's going to be nuggets you're going to get out of it. I, I can remember the first IBS that Steve and I went to, my husband, um, and it was before I even worked at the, the company. It was, we, he just started, we went, we're kind of getting an idea of, okay, what are we, what are we doing in this business? And I remember I having a notepad and listening to the education series and like jotting down notes of like, okay, if I came into the business, this is what I could do. This is what my job would be, right? Not just bookkeeping and accounting. What would that look like? And what would our structure be? And where's our org chart? I remember sitting at like a break, like penciling this stuff all out. And so it's really cool, especially if you're a young new company to to go and check that out. And, you know, even if you have been in it for a while, you don't get the, I, I call them like, you know, 15 aha moments, but you're going to get a, you're going to get a nugget. You're always going to get something that's going to come out of it. You're going to, I should do that. You should do that when I get back. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, it was kind of like going, you know, it's in Las Vegas, which is so appropriate because I went to the Orlando and it was like, it felt like I was in Las Vegas. You go into the booth and it's just like lights and booths and people. And you're just like, there's a lot of energy yeah. here. And yeah. I know I've talked to my own clients in the past about how like IBS, they've met people and that's where a lot of their initial kind of like networking event because in construction, there isn't a ton of like, you know, wine and dine sessions, like meet other builders in your area. That's pretty unique. So I wanted to kind of get your perspective on, you know, how do you like to focus on building relationships, community with other builders, you know, even outside of IBS and, and moving into 2023? Yeah. So one thing that was key for our business is we joined a, a peer mentoring group for builders. Um, and so it's basically acts like a board of advisors. And that That's was awesome. that was huge for us. One to put us in a, a realm and space of dialogue with people that are doing what we're doing. They're outside of our market, right? So there's a more open-ended conversation of what you're talking about for markup and what you're talking about for margin and um, just challenges and those kind of things, right? And that's helpful, right? How do you guys do this? How do you approach this? You're not gonna go ask your competition for that, right? So that's, uh, that's the first part that was really helpful for our business, especially getting started. How do you structure your business? How do you go about these? Does anybody have a template or a form for this HR issue? So that aspect's great. But I think the thing that's now that we've been in it for about four years now, um, the thing that's really that I always take away from it, we meet 
two times a year for a week. And it's just that sense of like having somebody else understand what you're going through. I think construction's tough, right? Yeah. It is a tough industry. It's tough to go build. It's tough to go build after COVID. And and it's tough to be a business owner in construction. And so it's, sometimes you're just like, are we, is it just us? Like th th this can't just be us, right? So it's nice to sometimes sit down and, and have those frank conversations and chat and go, okay, it's not just us. And so you get kind of these insights and um, like talking with Brad and Joe, you know, earlier this month, it's like, we just kind of, you know, sit around and, and share the, the, oh man, I had that happen once too story, <laughs> right? And so those, sometimes you gotta just get that off your chest because it just, makes you feel a little bit better to, to kind of, okay, let me, let me get this off and you know, get some good, uh, some good nuggets from it too. If not just a good laugh, like, Oh, I'm glad that didn't happen to me. So. <laughs> yeah. One of the things, uh, I found myself doing it. It's funny. Like I had a little bit of background in construction, just like, uh, my dad was a shop teacher and in the summer we like roofed houses and things like that, but I didn't know much. And I'm working at a tech company that does, construction software. And so how much I'm just like organically learning about the, and I'm a, I host a podcast for some reason, but the thing that I've learned the most from is social media, especially people that we have on the podcast. I'll go and like give them a follow on Instagram. A few people are pretty active on like Twitter and stuff too. Like I'll definitely be giving you guys a follow um, after this interview. And like, I don't know, I did like people just post the most helpful stuff all the time and I'm constantly scrolling through. And it's funny to watch the content that I'm <laughs> that I'm uh, intaking over the past five years of me working at Builder Trends slowly just to be pretty much nonstop construction uh, at work and in my personal life. But that's that's another one that I would definitely recommend people, you know, check out is there's a there's a ton of good content and entertaining content, too. Like you mentioned, uh, Joe at Cardinal Crest, like those guys are I follow them on TikTok even like hilarious right now. Yeah, we've They're had a so funny. Yeah, Joe, he, he was on our last episode or last one we shot and we were just cracking up because he's just got so much personality. And But we've had multiple guests that are kind of taking that spin on construction, like being the construction educators for the public. And that's their angle into attracting business. Like you're not just going to learn about, you know, or you're not just going to get a house. You're going to learn like how this process works. And like, you know, you look yeah. at Matt Reisinger and the, the Builder Show and, and all the content about construction. Um, but you mentioned too, like you kind of have to go also work at that. It doesn't just happen like right. that, the networking, you got to put yourself in those situations, reach out in your community. Odds are there probably is something in your backyard, but that's, that's been kind of my experience. A lot of builders come to builder trend. They're like, I want to talk to other builders too. And so like even your vendors can help connect and build those things. Um, you know, and I'm sure you've got a ton of people in your own, like, I, I think about like moments where you like kind of something kind of clicks in such an informal moment. Those like at your events with your group, you probably just like a throwaway comment kind of like, Oh, <laughs> like I've never thought of it that way before. And then like you totally. solve a problem and that's, that's super oh, valuable. Yeah. It uh, definitely is. And it, it allows you to, to put it in perspective of how can I, how can I take this back to my company? Or even if it's just like, Hey, that situation that you were talking about, you know, I went, went to dinner and then I thought about it last night. And then it's like, how, how, what, what do you think about this? What if I did this with my client, right? How would that go over? And so it's just somebody else to bounce those off of. And it's really helpful, especially with our, my dynamic is, you know, as a husband, wife, sometimes we got to turn that off too, right? So we'll <laughs> talk about it at home when our kids are like, can you not talk about work, please? You're like, it's your future. <laughs> this is a family run business. You got to have someone inherit it. I, my kids know like the names of our job sites are by street. And so my kids will ask like, you know, Hey mom, do you have a job? Do you have a meeting at Redstone today? Or like, <laughs> Oh, were you at sky today? Like my kids know, like That's and so funny. we just had Thanksgiving break and I paid my oldest. He had um, a home Depot bucket. They told him I pay him $5 for every time, every bucket full that he full, he filled up of trash at the job site. <laughs> oh, like he just go. went around picking up trash and nails. So I'm like about 20 bucks short now. So. <laughs> hey, worth it though. Yeah. I was going to say, we'll get them a builder trend login and then they can start doing some of the, who the said PM there's a labor stuff, shortage, so. you know, just get your, get exactly. your kids a little, a little money motivates them. It's great. I'll just get them on the to do's and builder trend. And yeah. yeah. Like, be great. Honestly. Yeah. The kids will have it in no time. They'll just pick it right up. You know, like my nephew, like teaches me stuff and I'm like, I'm not that old. <laughs> You're seven. What's happening? Yeah, that is tough. Um, 
Heather, we're getting close to time here. Uh, one last question that we wanted to ask since you come from such a unique background of starting a business and, and growing it very successfully. For other builders out there listening, um, maybe thinking about that, you know, they work for someone else or they're looking to step away and start their own thing, or maybe they just did and they're looking to grow it. Do you have a couple of nuggets of advice that we could, we'd leave them here with to, to end the episode? Yeah, uh, find a mentor. Find somebody who will help you, you know, give you that insight, have those conversations with you and help you out. We were, we were really, very uh, fortunate that we had mentors that helped us in getting our start and just kind of figuring out how to go about starting a business in general. So that's not really something they teach you in business school even. So um, if you can find a mentor or somebody that's doing what you want to do, offer a cup of coffee, hey, can I buy you, you know, lunch, whatever, right? Uh, try to get them to use them as a resource if they're open to it. So find a mentor is my number one advice to anybody starting to start a business. That's fantastic advice and, and good for uh, anyone listening, regardless of the kind of vertical that they're in, in the space. So Heather, thank you very, very much. Uh, fantastic episode. Uh, and I look forward to meeting you in person at the International Builder Show. That's right. We'll have a little fraternity of podcasts, you know, <laughs> everybody's been on and, and do a little unity tour. It's going to be great. Hey, it's a pretty, pretty big time group. You know, I know. It's more for like us to be like, no, we met, we met Heather. You yeah. Know, we like tell people in the office about it. <laughs> Heather, thank you so much for joining. You're always welcome Aww. back. We'll see you in Vegas. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. All right, Charlie, we just had Heather here on the building code. Always a fantastic episode. Love hearing from our customers about their perspectives. And this one, we got a little technical. We got into some of the, the, I, the sides of commercial construction and a little bit about how to, you know, network within the construction community. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I thought uh, I thought Heather was fantastic, um, and I knew she would be just because, like I said, we had her doing the case study um, for Builder Trend not that long ago. She's going to be on the pan panel all um, out at IBS, and so clearly what she's doing is working, and people want to hear more about it. And so I thought, uh, yeah, the podcast is just another opportunity to kind of spread the good word. Um, very very interesting story. Always like, I feel like about half the people we have on the podcast got into construction on accident. Yeah, and she said half, that it's unique and it's not that it's not unique, but it's like, I wanted to say like, Heather, actually we hear this all the time. It's, yeah. it's one of the things I love about construction professionals is they all have such interesting backgrounds. Right, absolutely. And the and then the other half, like it's their whole life was like, yeah. they knew they were gonna yeah. do it, their dad did it. That's Heather's you know. kids, <laughs> <laughs> their future is in construction. But no, I thought that was a great episode and uh, I'm just really, really excited to get out to Vegas and hear her speak on the panel. It's coming. Yeah, soon. When this releases, we'll be like a, a couple days away. That's right. So we hope you'll see you down there. If you want to meet us, Charlie and I will be there. Feel free to tap us on the shoulder and say what's up. And yeah, check us out. Don't forget to check out the panel uh, where we'll be talking about not making mistakes, hosted by our CEO, Dan Houghton, and having some other wonderful individuals to talk about how to avoid those mistakes. Aren't you, Zach, you're actually like you're working at IBS, right? Like you'll do real things there. Allegedly, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, be like the guy in the corner who's like, looks good. Well, no, so you're, contribute. what do you do? You're doing our pro services or? I help kind of facilitate a lot of the like process. I can speak to a lot of our services. Yeah. And, and what so customers so. or listeners could actually go and like learn something from you. That's right. But I'll be the guy that's just in the corner. So you guys need a Tableau dashboard. <laughs> you, just you just let them know. Yeah. If you just want to BS and talk, um, you can come talk to me. If you want to learn something, you can go talk to Zach. Uh, but either way, it'll be a fantastic time and we'll see how he's out there. Thanks for watching the video. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for exclusive content brought to you by Builder Trend.